Not long after the destruction of the war, a new Soviet-type state was formed and led by Matyash Rakoshi. Although he and his political circus served Soviet interests, he had absolute power in Hungary. Deprivatization and terror of the state security authority, total destruction of all opposition within the party and the country were characteristic features of the era. For almost a decade, Matyash Rakoshi was such an important person of post-war Hungarian history that the era was marked by his name. The start and finish of the so-called Rakoshi era is widely disputed. Several different beginning and ending dates can be considered. 1945 can be regarded as the beginning of the period. This was the year when Soviet rule expanded and when Rakoshi returned from his immigration to the Soviet Union. 1947 can also be regarded as the beginning of the era. This was the year when the Hungarian Communist Party gained majority in the ill-fated blue card elections. In 1948, the Hungarian Working People's Party was formed by merging the Hungarian Communist Party and the Hungarian Social Democratic Party, so this year can also be regarded as the beginning of the Rákosi era. Though Rákosi's position temporarily weakened after the death of Stalin in March 1953, like other Eastern European heads of state, his power depended on the Kremlin. According to public opinion, the Rákosi era ended only in 1956. Regardless of the exact dates, it is indisputable that from his return to Hungary in January 1945 until his immigration in 1956, Rákosi was one of the leading politicians of Hungary and a member of the highest level of state and party committees. He was the general secretary of the Hungarian Communist Party and later the Hungarian Working People's Party until 1953, after that the first secretary of the party. He took part in managing the state apparatus as a state minister, a deputy prime minister, a deputy chairman of the Council of Ministers, later a chairman of the Council of Ministers. Beside Ernő Gerő and Mihály Farkas, he was also a member of the three-membered committee that held actual decision-making powers in Hungary. The National Defence Committee, also known as the Committee of Three or Troika, carried out the highest level decision-making regarding state and national defence between 1950 and 1952. The basic document of the state structure, Act 20 of 1949, was created with the active cooperation of Rakoshi himself. The law was compiled by setting the Soviet Constitution of 1936 as an example. It determined the Hungarian state structure and its functions until 1989. The document was considered the Constitution until 1989. The story of its signing gives us an insight into the mechanisms of the era. Legally, as a Prime Minister, Rakoshi had no right to sign this document. However, he was the actual leader of the country, he thought he had. This period cannot be characterized only by the quality of the state apparatus. History remembers this period mostly for its shortages, low standards of living and the party propaganda contradicting all this. Planned relocations covered up by various propaganda methods and police atrocities remain vivid memories in people's minds. Yet the most typical institution of the era was the Department of State Protection, later called State Protection Authority. This authority worked under the Home Office until 1950. It became independent for a while and later it once again merged with the Home Office. The privacy of correspondence guaranteed by the Constitution was brutally overwritten by the state security authorities. The authority, led by Gabor Peter and his men, reminded the people who earlier suffered tortures and persecution of the terrors of the Aero Cross Party in 1944. Activities contradicting Act 7 of 1946, the law on protection of the democratic state and the criminal law of the Republic, were mostly the result of the state security authorities' actions. Among its functions were foreign and domestic intelligence, counter-espionage and the execution of politically motivated retaliatory actions. Constant fear and insecurity reigned throughout the country. It seemed that with the exception of Rakoshi himself, anyone at any time could become a political victim. It was of no importance whether someone was Minister of the Interior or Head of the State Security Authority. Just take a look at what happened to Mihai Farkas. During the whole period of Rakoshi's regime, there was only one person who took leading positions in the state and party apparatus. Someone who held an important position as an NKVD agent abroad. Someone who enjoyed the confidence of Moscow at the same degree or even more than Rakoshi. His decisions were not criticized, his reports were not corrected by Rakoshi. We can assume that in reality he was not the second man of the Rakoshi regime, but the most important man of the Kremlin in Hungary. 
This man was Erno Geru.